On this example, I want to solve a real-world problem and I want to touch the database a little bit more. So if you go to websites such as Facebook or Twitter, and by the way, if you haven't followed me, make sure you do on Twitter and Facebook, you can find me as Devanob, and even my personal Facebook and Twitter accounts. I will be glad to have a chat with you. Anyway, so if I go on Twitter, we have this panel here where we can follow people. To make use of the forge loop, which this video is about, I will create something similar. We will create 100 users in an instant. It will take something like 5 seconds. And all the users have random names and emails, which is pretty cool. For now, we already have some users in the users table, and of course we can make use of this. However, I want to take you through some introduction to model factories, faker, and seeding. The example that we will work with doesn't require much regarding model factories and you will see how easy it is to work with at least the basics because we will have a video on model factories so this is just an introduction and to create 100 users we need to make use of the user model factory. Guess what? This is already in Laravel so we don't even have to create a model factory for our users. Pretty cool, right? So if I go to database, factories, you can see a model factory file there. If you open that, you can see a factory for users. So let's analyze and see what we got here. First of all, we are using Faker. Faker is a package that will create random stuff for us. For example, here it creates a random name, a random email. However, the password will be always secret, except if you change that. Of course, if we are going to create 100 users for test, then we definitely not want all of them to have the same email and name, right? So there you go, this is the first introduction to Faker. It is an amazing package and we will go deeper in future videos. But all what it does is to create random stuff for us. Okay, now what about factories? What do we need to know for this video? Well, what is a factory first of all? Imagine a car factory. What does it do? It has one or many car models and uh, what it does is to create copies. For example, Mercedes. So here we have a model called user. What it will do is to take this model and will create as many users as we want, like a real factory. If we had a booked table and we wanted to create some dummy books for testing, then we would create a book factory like it is done here and then we would be able to create thousands of books for testing. Don't forget about Faker though. If we didn't have Faker, then all the users and the books would have the same names, emails, or book titles, whatever. Just one thing. If you remember in the video about mutators, what we did was to create a mutator for the password. And we already used the bcrypt function there, which means that if we have it here as well, it will bcrypt the bcrypted password and we cannot log in. So make sure you remove this and keep only secret like this. And let me prove this, so if I go to the user model, you can see here that we have a mutator for the password that we use the bcrypt function. And if you don't know what mutators are, make sure you watch the video about that. Great, now that we have an understanding of factories and faker, the real question is, how can we create x amount of users? This is where the seeding comes into place. So with seeding, we can seed our tables, in this example, the user table. If you open the seeds folder, you will find a database seeder file. In the run function, we will call the user factory and we will create 100 users. It is very easy, just follow me. Factory. And here we specify the model, which is user. Then we specify the number of users that we want to create, 100. And then we just say create. So what this does is to call the user factory 100 times which means that it will create 100 users with random names and emails and the password will always be secret, unless, as I said, you pass a new password. Now, the way to run this is very simple. First of all, let's clear everything that we have in our database. So we already have some users, but I want to start from zero. So what do we do? Do we clear the tables one by one? Do we delete all the tables and run PHP Artisan Migrate as we have done? Of course not. Just open a new tab on your terminal and run php artisan migrate refresh. This will delete all the tables and create them again. So if I go to my database, the users table now has zero rows. So time to create 100 users. How can we do that? Well, simply run 
PHP Artisan, DB Seed. This will take a couple of seconds. But when it is done, you will have 100 users in your users table. As you can see now, it says 100. And if I go here, we have exactly 100 users. So this command will go into the database seeder and will run whatever is inside the run function. In our case, we have specified to call the user factory and create 100 users. Perfect. We now have 100 users to play with. And remember, they all have unique emails and random names. So let's put them into work. I will copy the email of the first user and try to log in. The password is secret. OK, it looks like we have an undefined variable, married. So let me just clear this, delete that, go back and reload. OK, so it works. As you can see, you don't need to register users anymore to test your application. You can have as many users as you need using factories, faker and seeding. We already have a view to display users, right? Do you remember? If you visit users, you can see the result. This was done in one of the previous videos, which means that we already have available a route, a controller, a function inside the controller and the view. You can find the view inside admin. So if I go to resources, views, admin, users, and just open the index file. Let's also open the users controller. OK, perfect. So here in the index function, what we want to do is to pass to the view all the users instead of having them hard coded as we have done here. So I will delete this part and I will say user all. And this will get all the users and pass them inside the users array. Let's see what we got. So I will just return this, return users, and I will go back. So we have 100 users. The reason why I went for this number, which is pretty high, is because in the next video we will see pagination. By the way, now that we have so much data on our browser, it is very hard to read the data unless you have an extension for a browser as I have here. So if I disable this extension, then I guess this is what you see and this makes it very hard to read. To solve this problem, just download and install the extension that I use. Google this, the missing JSON inspector. If you decide to use a different extension, no problem. Just make sure it makes the data to be readable as we have here. Now let's go back to Sublime Text. We want to pass the users to the view instead. So I will delete the return. And now we should see all the users. So let's go back. Not exactly the result that we were expecting, right? Can you find out why? We are trying, so if I go to the index, we are trying to access attributes like location and first name and last name that are not available. As you saw earlier, when we returned all the users, we have access to attributes such as name, email, created at, stuff like that. So let's make the appropriate changes, including some bootstrap CSS. First of all, I will extend the app file, which is the master file, including by default from Laravel, extend, layouts, dot app and of course we need a section for the content i will create a row so class row we also need to have a couple of columns here so call md6 and i will add a bit of offset so call md offset 3 so we have this uh, in the center then we need a ul the class is a list group. And now we have the forage slope. So just copy this and paste it there. I will just delete this. And this one as well. The class for the ally is list group item. I will add a bit of margin top. So margin top about 20 pixels. And I will create a span. So the span will have the name of the user. So user name. And I will create another span. The class for this one is pull right and clear fix. So here we will say joined. I will open parentheses. And I will say user created at. Let's also add a follow button. So button class 
btn btn xs so it will be a small button btn primary and here we will say follow so if we now go back we should see something like this so what we did was to take the user's array and loop through each user so I think the code here for the for each is very simple, right? So just take each user and look through each user. However, there is something that I don't like. This timestamp here, it is not very pretty. So what I can do for this is to say here diff for humans. We have already used carbon in one of the videos. This time I want to display something like the user joined x seconds or hours or whatever ago. So this will do the work. If you go back now and you reload, now it says joined 10 minutes ago. We also have the follow button and the name of the user right here. There we go. Maybe this was a bit of a clickbait because I had to only use for each for this video. However, I wanted to also make an introduction to model factories, faker and seeding. And as you saw, it wasn't very hard, right? Anyway, hopefully you learned some stuff from this video. In the next one, we will paginate the results that we have here.